We previously discussed row echelon forms and reduced row echelon forms of matrices. Links in the description to my lessons introducing those topics. Today, we're just going to do some practice recognizing those forms. Here we have eight matrices. For each one, we want to identify whether it's in row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, or neither. Now, I will mention some definitions allow matrices in row echelon form to have leading entries other than one. For our purposes, that's not the definition. The definition of row echelon form does require the leading entries are one, and those leading entries need to have zeros below them. Again, links in the description to my in-depth lessons on these forms. So take a look at these matrices and give it a shot yourself. Now, let's go over the solutions. This first matrix is the identity matrix. It's clearly in reduced row echelon form. All of the leading entries are ones. They follow the staircase pattern, and there are zeros in the columns aside from the leading ones. Above and below those leading ones, you've got zeros. It's in reduced row echelon form. This matrix is in neither row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. Both of those forms require that zero rows are at the bottom of the matrix, and this matrix, of course, fails that test. Row two is a row of zeros, which is above row three. If we were to swap these, the matrix would then be in reduced row echelon form. Of course, reduced row echelon form is just a stronger set of requirements than row echelon. So if it's in reduced row echelon form, it's also in row echelon, but I'm not gonna mention that again. Just say that this one time. Next, we have this matrix, which is actually just the previous matrix with rows two and three swapped. So we can see this is in reduced row echelon form. Now, what about this matrix? It's not in reduced row echelon form because we have this leading one in row two that doesn't have zeros above it. There is a non-zero number above this leading one. That's not allowed in reduced row echelon form. However, this matrix is in row echelon form. All of the non-zero rows, which in this case are all of the rows, have leading entries of one. There are zeros below the leading ones, and each one is further to the right than the one above it. So it is in row echelon form. This next matrix is the zero matrix and it is in reduced row echelon form. It has only zero rows. So it's trivially true that the zero rows are below the non-zero rows because there are no non-zero rows. None of the other requirements for reduced row echelon form are really applicable because it's all zeros. This next matrix would be in row echelon form by definitions that allow leading entries other than one, but because we are not allowing leading entries other than one, this matrix is in neither row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. If we just multiplied row two by a half, it would be in reduced row echelon form. Last two examples, this matrix here is not in reduced row echelon form because there is a non-zero entry above this leading one. However, it is in row echelon form because all of the non-zero rows have leading ones. Each one occurs further to the right than the leading one above it, and there are zeros below the leading ones. So it's in row echelon form. This last matrix is in neither reduced row echelon form or row echelon form because it has a non-zero entry below a leading one. That precludes it from being in either of the echelon on forms. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.